creativity most often comes out of a balance between restraint and rules that it has to be this size, you have to do it in 15 minutes, and a terrifying freedom that it can't come out of complete totalitarian rules, nor can it come out of a total freedom, but it comes out of the right balance between those things. And so whether you're making a film or whether you're making a program, programming something or, uh, or recording a record or writing a novel, I think it's interesting to keep in mind that um, it is a conversation as opposed to a lecture. I make uh, documentary films and uh, those are basically linear, fixed forms of, of media. Um, when we show Objectified tonight, it's going to be 75 minutes and 36 seconds long. And when we show it in London next month, it'll still be 75 minutes, 36 seconds long. There's no way for the viewer of the film to, to um, change the, the plot line or the characters or you know, necessarily the, the destination. So the question is, I guess, in something that I, that, I, that I think about is, how can you make a fixed documentary film um, open to interpretation and, and feel interactive uh, as a viewer? The first thing is uh, uh, really to use ellipsis, which basically means um, intentionally leaving out information that then the viewer of the film really needs to figure out themselves and to put their own experiences and their own um, curiosity into play to figure out what's going on. Um, there's that moment of discovery once you do figure it out that's sort of like a, a kind of like a payoff basically um, that I think makes it much more compelling than if someone just tells you what the story is. For documentary filmmakers, I mean speaking personally, and I think documentary viewers, there was a um, kind of a, a, a turning point in the early 1960s with a, a group of filmmakers in New York uh, that included Robert Drew and D.A. Pennebaker and uh, David and Albert Maisels and Ricky Leacock, the so-called direct cinema um, movement of filmmakers, whose um, goal was to kind of put the viewer in the picture, uh, almost this sort of fly-on-the-wall observational approach and kind of throw you in and it's like you sink or you swim. You figure it out or, or you don't figure it out. Keep a good head and always carry a light bulb. <laughs> Excited? Well. I think what uh, is, is, uh, is great here, and especially if you compare it to all the kind of documentaries that came before this period, is, is what's not there, what's left out. There's no narrator telling you what's going on. There's no title cards telling you that, you know, he's being interviewed or what, you know, what the story is. If you walk into a, a crowded room at a party, little subtitles don't pop up underneath everybody telling you who they are and what they do and something. You gotta kind of, kind of go out there and you gotta discover, you gotta find out who the people are, you've gotta, you've gotta put some work into it. And at the end of the night, you still might not, you know, you might talk it over and go, who was that guy with the other girl and blah, blah, blah. Um, so so it, it leaves it open to interpretation. When we were editing Objectified, uh, Joe Beshenkovsky, who is the editor that I worked with, um, said when we started that he liked to keep the film 15 seconds ahead of the, of the audience. So basically things are happening, but you're, you're always kind of trying to figure out what, what's going on, um, and then it becomes clear in a few, in a few seconds, or um, you get a little bit more of an idea a few seconds later. So you're, you're in this kind of mode of discovery almost throughout the, the film, and I think that's a kind of really simple, but it's a really powerful way to bring um, the viewer's, uh, uh, again, curiosity into, into play in the film and make it um, individual to them. So yeah, I was, I was doing this thing and you know, this project and I, I wanted to create something that was quite different to how you actually consume the web traditionally. And I do sort of I like mashups and things like that. Um, I was doing them before they were called mashups, but hey. Uh, so, uh, I'll show you it. I'll shut up and I'll show you this thing. So, it's a it's kind of a news explorer thing. So, I don't know why Howard Stern is in the news, but apparently, like, so what it does, it gets like the most popular news thing at the moment, and it'll put it in there. But you can put anything in. But we'll go we'll go with Mr. Stern. So, um, you click go. It says searching the news for Howard Stern. Now, this is my favourite bit. It says doodle to see results. 
and then it fades. Bye. And so, <laughs> and that's it. It's like, okay, where's, where's the interface gone? Where's the okay buttons? Oh my God, mum. Um, so he started to cry. And when, when a friend at work saw this, he said it actually scared him. And I was like, yes, that, that's what I want. Because we, we do get complacent with interfaces. And why can't we have new kind of interfaces? And do you remember when you first you know, used Word I mean, or whatever, you know, or a browser? You didn't really know what was happening. You learned it. And I think these days, you know, this, people think that if you can't use it within two seconds, then it's rubbish. And that's not true. Um, so, and that's why, I, that's why I didn't have doodle to see results and then a whacking great big OK button or a continue. Uh, I, I don't want that shit. So, you know, it's like, and I'm going now, bye. Figure it out, dude. So, so what you do, so, and then it gets really scary. So um, you, you, you go, hmm, let's, you know, put in, as Gary was saying, putting a little bit of work in to go, you know what, I'm going to have a go. And hopefully my computer and the world is not going to end. Um, so you, you go like that and you get the results along the line. Um, and it's pretty screwed up because this is about serendipity and randomness and blah, blah, blah. So uh, what happens is that you can then... So obviously these, are a lot, the, these um, stories are quite similar. Um, but what you can do, you can, and you get, you get kind of clues as well. So you can then go, right, I want to read about that. And you can draw, and I'm going to, there. So, and then you, you get a little preview of it. And then you can actually link off, and you can roll over that, and you can then go to the web page. But where it gets really interesting is that you then get associated subjects. So then you can, I don't know who Mary Hart is, I'm sorry. I'm from England. Uh, so... So you can do Los Angeles, and uh, you can go like this, and uh, whoop, and um, <laughs> thank you. That's my mum. Right. So, and, uh, no, <laughs> just had a sex change. Um, so, and then you can, uh, yeah, and you can just keep going and going and going, and uh, and then uh, you can zoom out and see it. And people draw things, so they can draw like guitars or so South by Southwest, you might draw a guitar or something. So what ha what's interesting though is you can start on Britney Spears and end up at the Pope. And any interface that allows you to do that has to be good. Um, so, so yeah, and it's about, you know, and it's just a little bit different, a little bit scary. And, and I, I don't think, I don't want to live in a world where no, anyone can say to me, you can't make that uh, or it's wrong. Um, you know, it's part of, you know, I think we should be deb debating these things and throwing these things in the mix and stuff. And uh, it's pretty screwed up. I wouldn't like to use Amazon like this, I tell you. And I, I found a, a little quote that was sort of uh, PATH-based, which I really like this quote. My, I have a friend who makes letterpress cards, and she, she gave me this card and was like, that's perfect. And uh, I think we should go into the woods a bit more often. Thank you.